So we're going to continue with learning our Maseches Tamid, and we thank you for handing out the Gemaras. So we're going to continue. We are, if you're using, we have the art scroll that was passed out. In the front, we're on Lamed Aleph, Ahmed Aleph. We are about five lines down. Towards the end of the line, Kara Esalei. It's going to talk about where they ripped out the heart for the carbon Tamid. If you're using the back, it's on 31A2. 31A2. So again, we've been talking now about the carbon Tamid. We've talked about how it was brought. We've read about all that went on prior to the carbon Tamid being shechted. And now we're talking about after the carbon Tamid, this lamb was slaughtered, how it was butchered. It was going to be cut up into various pieces. And each section was going to be handed off to a Kohen who had won in the lottery, had won the right to carry that section of the lamb up onto the ramp and then onto the Mizbeach. But now what we're going to be getting is the one who was in charge of butchering it after it's been shechted, we're going to see what, how it was cut up. Again, we said last night in the back on 31A1, there was a really good picture of what this lamb would have looked like when it was hanging and being butchered. So as you see, it's being hanging, it's left hanging from its left hind leg. So there's a hook that went through about the knee section there and it's being hanged from the left hind leg. And you'll see that's gonna make sense because obviously if it's hanging from that left hind leg, the last part that's gonna be handed off to one of the quantum to carry is gonna be that left leg. They can't hand off the left leg before they're done butchering up the rest of it. Otherwise it's just gonna fall and collapse. So we've already talked uh, in the Mishnah about how they butchered up the beginnings of it. Now we're gonna continue. So again, we're Kara Saleh. So then the Kohen who was in charge of butchering up this lamb reached in and took out the heart and he, he had to cut it open. Why did he have to cut it open? Votes, he has gamo to remove the blood that was in it because there was all sorts of blood that had congealed after the shechita took place and they needed to get that blood out before it was going to be burnt, the heart was going to be burnt on the Mizbeach. Then he cut off the two forelegs, meaning the front legs of the of the lamb, they're referred to as yadayim, just because imagine the lamb standing on its back legs. Those are called the raglayim, the hind legs, as if it would be a human. And the front legs are called yadayim. So they would then cut off those two, and those went to one coin. Those two front legs were given to a coin who had won that right. Then he went and butchered, he cut off the right hind leg. Remember, it's hanging from the left hind leg. So the right hand, hind leg was just kind of slouched over hanging there. So that was cut off. It doesn't tell us what type of knife was being used here. If there was a, bo a bone saw, or that, you know, I, I didn't see anything of that nature where they always cut. You'll see they clearly had to be cutting through bone because we're going to get to the ribs soon. So again, obviously there's no electric uh, uh, knives going on. I'm just curious, like what, what type of knife was being used? What type of effort this involved? I, I just don't know. So, okay, so they cut off the right hind leg, and then that was given to the Kohen who had won the right to carry that part. Now it tells us along with the right hind leg, what it was cut in such a way that what was attached to it, it's two testicles, meaning the scrotum that the, uh, was going to be included in that cut with the right hind leg, it was going to have its reproductive organs there. Now it says, at that point, the coin is doing the butchering, cuts open the entire chest and stomach area, and then everything, so now all the intestines, the kishkas, everything is now readily being able to be seen. Now when you cut open, again, I, I've never done this, but apparently from the Mepharshim, when you cut open the belly of a lamb, there's a real fatty area uh, on the belly that covers the kishkas, covers the intestines. And that's referred to as the peder. There, that a lot of fat there. So it says not alas a peder. So the first thing you would do is cut out that huge fatty area. Now it's fascinating. What did he do with it? So that fatty area was used. You know, I, I, I've seen people when they make a real fatty brisket and they'll put it on the smoker. They call that the fat cap. You know that that they'll put on top of. You know that that's there. So he says, what did they do with that fat? Remember, the head had already been cut off in the beginning of the butchering process, the head of this lamb. It had, it had been beheaded right where the shechita took place, where it was, was the throat was slit when they cut through. So they had beheaded it. So now they took that fat cap, 
that they had took, taken out from the belly of the lamb. And what did they do? They would turn the head of the Kohen who was holding the head of the lamb, would turn it upside down. So now that the, the severed neck is sticking up, and they would take that fat and put it almost like as a cap on top of that, that severed neck of, of that. That was a way it was be more bukavadic that, that you shouldn't have the, the, the head being brought onto the Mizbech with the base of Shechita, everything all exposed like that. It was seen as being more bukavadic that it was, so to say, covered now with that, with that fat cap there. Not alas a karvayim. They took out all the intestines. Unisanon l'mishazacha ben ladichan. And he gave them to the one who won them, meaning in the lottery, to wash them out. Obviously, they don't want to bring any waste onto the Mizbeach. So the intestines, they were going to be rinsed out. And uh, on one of those tables, we said there was marble tables that were set up, and they would have pitchers of water there, and they would rinse them out just to make certain that they were clean before they were brought on the Mizbeach. Mishta continues, and it talks about some of the washing process. The hakares, now the stomach, which had a lot of Food, and there could be a lot more. And there's the, the kishkas, the intestines, there's a limited amount of, of smelly waste that could be in the, in the lamb. They, they just can't hold that much the intestines. But it sounds like what was in the stomach, the food that was in the process of being digested in there, that could have had a real stink. So it says, Vakaris, the stomach, when it came to washing that out, Medichin or so, Bebeis Hamadichin. That they took it out of the chutzr. They, the, they did not want to wash that in the are in the area, the courtyard there of the Beis HaMikdash because they were nervous that could really issue a stink. So there was a special washing house that was off to the side. That's where the rinsing chamber, it says, that's where uh, that was washed off. And the reason being, again, that would have produced an odor and they did not want to have that in the in the Chatzar. And they rinsed it out, everything that it would need, in order until you get it, that all the waste, all the food, all the digested process, the, the food that's in the process of being digested, that's all washed out of there. At that point, they would bring it back. But Karvayim, now when it came to the actual intestines, that they did not have to take, the mission is going to say now, they did not have to take that out of the chutz or to a separate chamber because they were very small on a lamb and they don't hold all that much food and waste. So therefore he says, mm-hmm. they would just rinse those off uh, about three times, a minimum of three times, right there in the chutz there on those marble tables, and that was sufficient. But the stomach, again, that they took to a different area. And that was, those were washed, the, the kishkas, the intestines were washed on those marble tables that were by the pillars where the, where the animals would be hung when they were being skinned and butchered. Mishnah continues, if you're using the back, we're now on 31A3. So the Mishnah continues, it's gonna talk about how they cut up the rest of it. Now, again, if you've been keeping a tally, you've been seeing a whole bunch of parts of the lamb have already been butchered, already been removed from, uh, the, from the body, but there's still a bunch left to go. And the mission is going to tell us how the specific order in which they were cut up. Now, again, I don't know the significance. I'm sure there's a lofty significance why it was butchered in this order. I'm sure some of the commentaries spent a lot of time on this. I just didn't see that brought down. I'm sure if we had anyone here who worked in a butcher shop, they might be able to tell us that there's some strategy involved. But there, I'm sure there's also some other reasons what the various organs and various limbs represented, why were they were taken off first, second, third. I just didn't have a chance to look that up. Let's see further. It says, not all us a So now the Kohen took the knife again. In other words, he had just cut out some of the innards, the, the stomach and the, and, the, and the kishkas. Now he's got to put that knife to work again. Uh, I don't know why he, he uses this. In other words, at every step of the process, he had to pick up the knife and use it again. So I'm not sure why the Mishnah sticks that expression in here. And he uses that knife to separate the lungs from the liver. Again, apparently on a lamb, if, if any, I, I've just never done this before. The, the, the liver and the lungs are very close, compacted together in the chest cavity, and they need some separating. But it's covered, and there's an appendage, there's a piece of the liver that one may have thought, just keep it together with the liver, he's going to say, no, that was kept separate because that would go with the different Kohen. So this is etzba kaveh, that lived that appendage. Etzba literally means a finger. So it was an appendage that looked like a finger that comes jutting out of the out of the liver. So he says, um, he uses knife to separate that from the covet also. Lo mizizam but he didn't budget from but he didn't budget from its place. Meaning that etzba you're going to see soon later in the Mishnah. He kind of he didn't cut it out that it should be totally independent. 
He used his knife to separate the liver from the appendage. So the liver is going to be independent, but that appendage is going to be there. It's going to be connected still to other organs that when those are cut off, that's going to be with it. You'll see in a minute where that's going to go. So now we would pierce the side of the breast. I'm told that that was the like the brisket area. That's the chaza is how that's referred to. So it says that he would, he would use his knife, he would pierce the side of the breast, that chest area, and he would give it to the Kohen who won that, and then he would go to the right flank, the right side of the rib cage that was close to the tail of the, of the uh, sheep, of the lamb. And he would use his knife and he would cut into the flank, I guess cutting through ribs, going down to the spine. But he would not actually cut open the shidra. The, the, uh, the spine was going to be absolutely straight and intact. It was going to be connected with the other side of the animal. So he's now cutting off one side of the animal here. And he would cut with that knife, meaning moving down towards the front of the animal. Until he got to the two soft ribs that were near the neck. Apparently on a lamb, the two ribs that are closest to the neck, to the head of the animal, they're soft and flexible ribs. So you'd cut with the knife until he got to those. And then what happened? So now at that point, he would cut off the right part of the animal, of that lamb, and he would give it to the Kohen whose job it was going to be that in, in the lottery won the right to carry that part of the lamb. Now the covet, the liver, that was suspended within that right flank, meaning it was kind of connected to it. In other words, he had used the knife to separate the covet from the etzba, and when he gives, cuts off now the right side of the animal, attached to that is the covet, is the liver. Bolo legera, at that point now, he's, he's approaching the neck. He left the, the two soft ribs from, meaning on the, on the, on the right side, and, and two soft ribs on the, on the other side. And then he says, He cut off the next section and he gave it to the Kohen who won it. So again, he's taking off kind of the front of the animal. He's taking off the front, that neck part and it, that's between the two soft ribs on either side and he gives it to that Kohen. Attached to the neck is gonna be, the Kana is the trachea. And then the rea is the is the lev is the heart. The rea is the lungs. Uh, that's all connected with that neck, and that that goes to one coin. Bolo ladofen smallest. Now what's left is the left side, the left flank of the sheep. So he's now how is he going to cut that up? Niach shteit salos rakos milmalon. So he left the two soft ribs that were near the tail, meaning those are the, the highest one because it's hanging now. So it was the two soft ribs, the two end ribs were also soft that was near the tail. And, and the two soft ribs below, meaning that were going to be near the neck. It would leave out the same ribs, he says, on the other side. So it comes out that with the whole animal, he's leaving out those, uh, those ribs there. So after uh, excluding those ribs, he cut, meaning those ribs are going to be attached with the, it seems like with the spine. So after excluding those ribs, he now cuts off that left flank and he gives it to the Kohen who won that. The spine is going to be together with it. The spleen is suspended, also attached there. Now in truth, the left flank was going to be a bigger section than the right flank. So then why do we always refer to the right flank as being the gadol? We call the right one the gadol. Why? Because it had the liver, which was chashev. That was really important. That was attached. That's why, theoretically, even though the left side was bigger, there was more attached to it, we called the right side the gadol because it had the liver. Just a little more, we're done here. And he says, now what's left is he's got the tail, the back portion uh, at the end of the spine. That's what's left. And, and the right leg. So, so he cuts off the tail and he gives it to the Kohen whose job it is going to be to carry that. Now with the tail, with the okets, the end part is going to be the fatty tail. That etzba covered, which we said was the appendage, looks like a finger of the liver and the shteklaios is the kidneys. That's all connected there. Now the final piece is going to be what it was hanging from to start with was the left uh, hind leg. Not all the regular smallest. So now what's left is the left hind leg. So he, he he doesn't have to cut that anymore. That's all that's left. He just takes it off the hook, 
And then he hands it to the Kohen, whose job it's going to be to carry that. Next, the mission is going to continue. We'll continue it tomorrow night. It's going to be now that they've all got their parts, what was the order in which they ascended and put it up onto the Mizbeach? We'll continue, God willing, tomorrow night. Okay, so we'll say a Kaddish.